Today we'll be checking out the FP750 by Mustang. Cut! It's Max Tang. And today we'll be checking out the FP750 by Max Tong. Cut! You can't say that! <laughs> it's Max Tang! <laughs> today we'll be checking out this mini PC. Subscribble. We have a box, and this time it's from Hong Kong. This was sent to us in purpose of video review. No cash has been exchanged, and all opinions are our own. In here there's a mouse pad, which is a nice addition to the main event, the Maxtang FP750 Mini PC. The variant is a 7735HS, 32, 1T, and let's look inside. We're greeted to the instruction manual, but this is a basic generic type, showing us only how to plug things up and things like that. Under this thick layer of styrofoam, we can see the Mini PC. And we're glad to see it's well packaged, minimizing chance of damage during the transport. And under here, we got cables and things. Let's have a look. There's a set of rubber feet. An add-on board for a SATA drive. A one and a half meter HDMI cable. A power adapter by Hunky. And this one seems to be a slimmer design than usual. It's a switching adapter outputting at 19 volts, 4.74 amps, at a maximum of 90 watts, and it uses a barrel jack. To power this, we'll need to plug in the cable. And as we're in Japan, it came with one matching our region. Also came with a VESA mount. With this, we can attach the mini PC to the wall, under our desk, or at the back of a monitor. And here's a bag of screws. Moving on to the specs now. This computer came loaded with a very capable Ryzen 7735HS processor, so it should be good for music and video production. The inbuilt GPU should be able to run games without needing the help of an external card. The internal NVMe comes with Windows 11 Pro installed, and the SATA connection allows us to add an inexpensive 2.5 inch drive. This model currently goes for $583 on the website shipped, and if you use the coupon code TIM30, you'll get $30 off. If you want it a bit cheaper, you can also select not to include Windows 11 Pro, Wi-Fi, and have half the memory and storage for a fraction of the price. This plastic protection is on the top, as well as the bottom of the case. First impressions, it does look very nice and non-intrusive. Both the bottom and top have made of plastic, contrasting the sides, which are of metal. On the front of the PC, we have the headphone jack, two USB 3.2s, a USB-C, BIOS reset pinhole, data access LED, and on the end, the power switch. On the right side, there's some air holes. And surprisingly, this is actually an exhaust, which is great, as now the area where you plug things in won't get as hot. Around the back is where all the action is, such as the DC input for power, ports for USB 2, USB 3.2, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet LAN, two HDMI 2.0s, air intake holes along the bottom, and Kensington. Kensington? Yes, Kensington. We, we, we. Over here with the left side, we. <coughs> More holes for air intake. Beverly has one of those and it smells fun. With this case, the metal accents look really nice. Underneath, we have more holes for cooling, and screws in each corner, allowing for easy access. We hope, anyway. In the center, there's two screw holes for the VESA mount. And outside that, it's looking pretty clean. Of course, we'll add the rubber feet later, but yeah. It's time for the size comparison. The Maxan FP750 sits in between the GMK Tech G5 and the Ace Magic 8008. It's actually a very similar size to many other mini PCs, such as the B-Link Zero 6, the Rear 10 Alloy 9, and many of the GMK Tech models. It's actually around the same size as a compact disc, and this band is great. Here's a regular pencil, measuring tape, it's around 12 centimeters in width, but if you can't measure in centimeters, it's a Roy Bosch tea bag. The Max Tang FP750 is around four Roy Bosch tea bags big. After connecting to a 4K monitor, speakers, mouse, and a brand new keyboard we got from AliExpress, we can ready the brand new mouse pad. After turning on the mini PC, we quickly ran into trouble. Using the HDMI cable that we got in the box, we couldn't get a signal out of either port. After changing it to one of our regular ones, hey presto. Bit of a shame that this HDMI cable's a dud, but what can you do? Looking at the system settings, all specs do check out. And this computer comes with Windows 11 Pro already activated out of the box. 
But what's surprising is we didn't need to go through any Windows setup screen at first boot, which could mean the system is compromised. Windows Defender gave us the all okay, but a full system scan using Malwarebytes gave us nine instances of a potentially unwanted program called Ludashi. Now this isn't a virus or even malicious, and all instances were registry keys seemingly left over from a poorly written uninstaller. But as this is a new PC, we want it completely clean. We tried to reset it from Windows itself, but as the installer is a bit messed up, we had to install Windows 11 Pro from scratch. Engage the sticks. Now with a fresh install of Windows 11 Pro, and a brand new keyboard, we can finally put it to use. The Max Tang performs well in Windows, and this Ryzen chipset has plenty of power, allowing us to use things like Office, graphics tools like Krita or Photoshop, and if you want to do some web browsing or online shopping, this computer has you covered. Here's some video streaming on Amazon Prime, Netflix, and YouTube in 4K. Checking out benchmarks, it's stock, the Max Tang is slightly slower than other 7735HS models. This is brought into line when pushing up the TDP, but it's likely that the competition ramp up their settings at stock. And Chizuka here is telling us our storage is slightly faster than the regular PCI 3 before. It's about time to play some games. For regular 2D games like Sonic Mania, this computer has no issues whatsoever. It's Dave the Diver at a full 60fps. Rocket League 1080p high settings. Fortnite 1080p high. While the drop from the bus had slow FPS, the game was playable. Every now and then we noticed a slight stutter, and you could fix this by either lowering texture quality or checking the BIOS. At default, the GPU is set to use 3 gigabytes of memory, but if we change this value to say around 4, our system doesn't need to work as hard, and the gameplay is much smoother. Dota 2 yes. Counter-Strike 2, 10 to low settings, and this plays great. And if we raise the graphic options to medium, we get around 60 FPS. When it comes to high tier emulation such as the PlayStation 3, this mini PC can perform, with drops happening when shaders are compiling. And this is a bit more obvious in Wipeout Fury HD. But once the shaders are compiled, it'll run as smooth as butter. Here's some Wii U. Star Fox Zero running at full speed. And Tekken Tag 2, Wii U edition. So now we know what it's capable of, let's see what's inside. First we'll need to take these screws out. And trying to get inside with fingers, or a pick, is a no-go. What we need is a bit of sellotape. So the inside is pretty clean, and here's the memory. The thing is it's DDR5 5600. The processor only can use speeds up to 4800, so we've been given better memory than needed. There's only one NVMe slot on the board, and the SSD included came with a heatsink attached. The one included is a 1TB Kingston PCIe Gen 4, and we're happy to see that both memory and storage are from reputable brands. Here's the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth adapter, and Intel AX200. 
But let's see if we can get to the CPU. This front plate has four screws. There's one behind the sticker. I would install Linux and run Fruitback Simulation. I'll be using a 4.5 bit to remove these four screws on the board. Ah, got some leeway. And it's out. We can see the antennas at the top of the case. We also have access to the CPU in case you want to do some maintenance and change out the thermal paste. If you're wondering where the SATA driver would go, seal it bang. We can attach it to the bottom plate. Let's give it a shot with our Batacera SSD. We'd have the board and the screws. We assume it's pretty straightforward. But which end goes where? There's a note on the cable that says do not reverse. So we check the manual, which was useless. And the manual online that was actually for this unit mentions nothing of the SATA connector. So we're going to guess with M for motherboard and L for Laufwerk. While doing this, we checked inside each connector to make sure the pins lined up. And we should be good to go. Checking the BIOS now, we have a variety of options available. It is a bit convoluted though. For example, the GPU option we found earlier was buried quite deep into the menu. But at least we're happy there are a lot of options to play with. We could easily boot up to Batacera Linux, our favourite front end for emulation. And we're happy to report that the Wi-Fi works straight out of the box without any issues. And the same applies to Bluetooth, where we could easily pair up our 8-bit Doge controller. And we can play our favourite games, such as Metal Slug on Neo Geo. The arcade version of Tekken 3. Spike out on Sega Model 3. Now we'll move on to some consoles, like the PSP. The PlayStation 2. Xbox. Nintendo GameCube. And Commodore Amiga. Moving on to the Wi-Fi signal strength, we get a slightly below average 65%. While this isn't exactly great, we had no disconnects on either Wi-Fi or Bluetooth controller. The labeling on the USB ports all check out, and the highest refresh rate at ultra-wide 1440p was 100Hz, the limit of HDMI 2.0. If you want any higher, you need to use USB-C to display port cable. The computer idles at just under 45 degrees Celsius, and it's very quiet. Pulling around 14 watts from the wall. Here it is under load, sitting at just over 70 degrees Celsius. And while it is louder, there's only one fan, so it's not too noisy. Pulling around 60 watts from the wall. We raise the TDP to 54 watts, and while the FPS rose, as did the temps, and the noise too. Pulling just under 90 watts. According to HW Info, we didn't get any thermal throttling, but there was an issue with power throttling. Basically the computer wants more watts than the power supply can provide. We just saw it was pulling 89 watts, but if you can recall, this power supply is only good for up to 90 watts. And in order to get the high TDP benchmark scores, we needed to use a power supply with a higher output. So if you intend on pushing the limits of this computer, you'll definitely need to upgrade this power brick. Meow. It's about time for the pros and the cons. This Maxdang FP750 is a fast, fairly quiet mini PC tucked inside an easily accessible strong case. The included NVMe and memory are of well-known brands. There's a 2.5 inch SATA bay for expansion, and it can play a good amount of games, including upper tier emulation. As for the cons, the Windows installation of stock is tainted. And while we're glad it's not a virus or malware, to have a new computer that doesn't prompt you with the setup screen is unsettling. The included power brick limits us to 35 TDP, the Wi-Fi signal strength is average at best, and the black plastic on the case is a fingerprint magnet. The construction of this mini PC is stellar, and if Maxdang alter only a few things, they surely can stand with the greats. Summary. Oh!